Um, Dan Swords, leader of Harlow Council. We had a cabinet meeting last night, Thursday. Were you a little, do you sometimes get a little bit frustrated that you don't feel your good news is getting out there enough? Well, I think that as uh, you report often, it's resident to the judge uh, of how well we're doing. I think if you look at the meeting last night, what we reported, we reported that we're projecting a surplus on both our day-to-day -day spending and on our housing spending. I don't think there's another council in the country currently projecting that. We've done that as well as freezing council tax, as well as investing more money than ever uh, into improving services. Likewise, we've reported on the council's performance. Across the board, performance is improving. So what do residents care about? They care about whether their council tax is being spent well. We're reporting well on that and how good a service they're getting for it. We've reported on that, as well as big initiatives like investing a lot of money into the stone, working with the police to drive out crime and regenerate the area. Uh, all manner of things we went through last night, and I think that is clear evidence. Uh, I think I personally ignore some of the noise and focus on what it is residents care about, and I think we were rewarded in May for exactly that. One man's noise, another man's scrutiny, though, isn't it? Like I say, I think the, the judge of our performance is residents. It's not opposition councillors. And, and you, behind us is a little clock that says 559 days. Is that when the next local election is? That is the next local election. I had exactly the same to the local elections in May when, indeed, those councillors you refer to told me abundantly clearly that we had lost the election. They had wiped us out of power uh, until the early hours of the morning when residents had had their say. Uh, so here we are, focusing on what matters. We've got six missions. We're delivering on each and every one. Many of the things I was told uh, by those councillors would be impossible. We are delivering on. Like I say, very strong financial position. Performance is improving on every service that we provide, from bin collections to turnaround time on empty homes, everything in between. And we're rebuilding the town centre as well as much much more just to, so talking about the town so let's go place by place acacia house what is there okay it's been demolished some people you must love it when people call you demolition dan um when whatever's there when will that reappear or is that in the government's gift no we've we've got the money in place got the plan permission contracts being appointed as we speak should be on site just after christmas there it's about an 18 month build period but i i enjoy the fact as you referenced that this administration has done more than any in the last 30 years to further the regeneration. So like you say, place by place, walk down Broadwalk, you see it under construction, walk down the bus station, see it under construction, into Market Square, under construction. It's massive redevelopment, once in a generation rebuild in the town centre, finally happening. And I have had many, many people, indeed those councillors, telling me we would never do it. It was all a lie, it was never gonna happen. Uh, but here we are delivering on that promise. And you felt a bit frustrated at one point with scrutiny saying, looked in the cabinet papers, these are facts. You felt that there was opinions gone, but these are facts on, in front of you. So that, that must frustrate you. Well, the, the, the reports in front of us are returns to government uh, on our performance. They are absolutely fact. I think, um, you know, in one sense, a bad workman blames their tools. In another sense, a terrible councillor can't live with good performance. Uh, and blames the facts in front of them. It's very clear, like I say, performance is strong across the board and continuing to improve month on month. We're charging residents less council tax for those services, uh, and we're in a very strong financial position and delivering it well. Um, when will we know if the investment in the Harvey Centre is a success or a failure? Well, it's a success already. The, the profit it is bringing into the council means that we can keep council tax down. It means that we can invest more in services. It means that those services are improving for residents. And it's one part of that big jigsaw of the rebuilding of the town centre. So what residents will see over the coming months is huge improvements to the Harvey Centre, massive investments that we'll be making into the centre uh, as a result of us owning it, as a result of the very strong performance of it. Like I said, it's already brought in millions of pounds of revenue into the council that we're able to now uh, spend instead of charging more council tax. And I know a question regarding the um, the, the tower block at um, the town station uh, was asked a couple of weeks ago in council, but it all looks all dressed up, ready to go. So can you just repeat when will we see people moving in there? Yeah. So as you as you reference and as you know, we worked extremely quickly, extremely hard uh, to stop Newham Council buying that block. I wish the, the old council had taken a similar approach when we had similar issues, but nevertheless, we delivered on that. We'll see people, Harlow people, moving in in the coming weeks, all 172 units. 
uh, including 52 from our own council waiting list, the other 120 uh, for local people as well. But we'll see people moving in over the next few weeks. There has been uh, a short period of time to get to that point because we move so fast. So many of the things that uh, we ordinarily would have done before buying it, we've done after buying it to ensure that we could stop new them. Uh, but in answer to your question, we'll see people, local people, moving in in the coming weeks. I guess the opposition might feel that they're sceptical, cynical, because sometimes bad news comes out of the blue. For example, like the fire report. You know, I think your comms team contacted me in very early in the morning when that report, because you want to get your right to reply. But so, so therefore people think, is there bad news around the corner that we don't know about yet, that we're not speaking about? Like the fire report came out of the blue. But you, you mentioned it last night, that, that whole thing, when the, the government report. Yeah, we're very clear um, on that report and on many other things. You know, I have never been shy in saying when the council's got things wrong. And historically, the council has got a number of things wrong. The most important thing is what we're doing to put those things right. Uh, I'm very clear on what the council's priorities are. They are the priorities of our residents. On each and every one, uh, we are delivering and keeping council tax down and improving services uh, across the board. So, yes, there have been issues. Uh, the fire report you referenced, but we've got a very clear plan to deal with it. We're cracking on with it and actually being commended by the regulator for the action that we're taking. It must be very hard to talk about the man on the street is that we've done about housing repairs and we've been to Five Acres or Pottersfield uh, ac across the road uh, near Wede and now people in Felmongers are getting these huge bills. You must feel for these people and how can you help or is it simply it needs repairing, there's the bill? Well, there, there are some practicalities to this. So we're talking about leaseholders. You know, the law is very clear whether we like it or not on uh, the requirement to leaseholders. The, the short point is... The council has not invested in these properties for decades. Uh, we're at a point where we have to invest in these properties uh, and we will do everything we possibly can. We've put in far more repayment options, far more generous terms to help those leaseholders. But, you know, if we want to see these properties improved, indeed, often we're required by regulation to improve the properties. Uh, you mentioned the fire, fire risk thing. That is a big part of these improvements. Uh, then sadly, these are the costs that we're bearing. We will do everything we can to help people. This year alone, in this financial year, we're investing £120 million into improving our housing services and our housing stock. Um, the major works you reference are one part of that, but also, you know, we've got the lowest amount of repairs in the system. It's not perfect. There's a long way to go. You know, when I took on this job, the average wait time for a repair was over a year. We've got that down to 60 days and we'll come down further. The average turnaround time on an empty home was three months. We've got that down to 21 days. That will come down further. We are doing an awful lot, correcting a lot of historic problems uh, to transform Harlow's housing. You said you've got collective responsibility here, but can you accept that the the revolving door of chief executives, interim chief executives over the last, whatever organisation you are, that's not a, necessarily a healthy way for a, for an organisation to ex, to promote itself, is it? I, I think the focus is misguided. I'm responsible for what this council delivers. I'm the leader of the council. I take the full burden, full responsibility for what this council does. We've got a very strong cabinet in place. We've got very strong... Uh, management team in place. And as I've referenced, performance is improving in every service area. Financially, we're projecting a surplus across the board. We're uh, delivering tens of millions of pounds of investment uh, to upgrade our assets, to improve community services. That's what residents care about. The buck stops with me. And I think we're demonstrating, whilst there is a lot further to go, that we are delivering. That's what I think uh, residents care about.